Welcome to the Brad Glenn Readings, and my name is Brad Glenn, I'm the author, and this is an experiment we're going to try out, and we'll see how it works. Today I'm going to be reading a story called After Mama Died Carrying the Jelly Baby. This is a story that came to me just one day when I was hanging out, and it uh, it was one of those moments where you almost get hit by inspiration and you just have to sit down and start writing like mad. This won a contest for the BC Federation of Writers and it was considered a special award winner. So, after Mama died carrying the jelly baby. After Mama died carrying the jelly baby, Papa and Leon started acting strange. Papa locked the door of his bedroom for two days, taking with him only a bottle of rye whiskey and a pail of peas Mama had picked three days earlier. He finally came out to empty the bucket he used as a toilet, and then went into town for the next couple of nights, sleeping at the hotel and leaving me alone with Leon. Papa ran from the house in such a hurry that he left his false teeth behind. They floated in a glass in the bathroom, like frogs in formaldehyde we dissected in science class. Leon was the strongest of our family, holding the anxiety of Mama's death in like a breath. Leon was two years older than me, so he took on Mama's chores. I think Papa wanted me to do it, being as I was suddenly the only female left in the house. But Leon took over her role without having to be asked. Leon was 16 and he had already dropped out of high school. He had been planning to work on the railway. But then Mama told him she was pregnant again. He was probably thinking that he was going to help take care of the new baby. Or maybe he thought it was a good excuse to stay home and not have to work. But either way, he did finally end up with the responsibilities of the household. I never went to Mama's funeral. I didn't want to see her in that box or get put into the ground. I heard my father's sisters in the spare room whispering that she was too old for another child and he should be ashamed of himself for making her go through with it. I didn't want to hear those whispers while they buried her. When my father called me to go, I hid behind the barn. After the car drove out of the yard, I walked to the swamp and sat. That's where I saw him for the first time. So I see you couldn't go to the funeral, eh? The voice spoke to me. That's not very brave of you, Maggie. Who is it, I called. The swamp burbled and spat, but I didn't see anybody. You don't recognize your own brother? L Leon? No, he went. It's me, the jelly baby. I looked down and he was near my feet. I jumped back in fear. He was nearly transparent, except for the veins running blue and red down his body, making him look like a plastic bag filled with viscous fluid and colored wool. He had an enlarged head and small, underdeveloped hands. His eyes were covered with a white film, and his mouth was wide, with tiny, sharp teeth. Wait, he called. But I couldn't. I ran back to the house and locked myself inside. Hours later, my father came home alone. Leon went to the after-funeral dinner, but my father was too worn out. He just sat in his lazy boy chair and watched television. I never told him about the Jelly Baby. Jelly Baby, I called, hoping not to get a response. It was around noon and I felt relatively safe by the swamp. Maggie, he whispered in his gurgling, throaty voice. He was leaning up against a rock. I didn't think you'd be back. Who are you? I told you. I am your brother. But what are you doing here? You were never born. Didn't they bury you? They were going to, but I escaped. They wanted to kill me, Maggie. And I'm not ready to die. How do you survive out here? I mean, it gets cold at night and there isn't anything to eat. The swamp is warm, and there are so many frogs here that I only need to open my mouth and one will jump in. This is heaven. 
I want to talk about Mama. I thought you would, he said, rubbing his forehead with the slimy finger stubs of his hand. He grinned, exposing his fine teeth. Did you kill her? Yes, Maggie, I did. When he said this, I breathed in hard, making my lungs hurt for a moment. He kept staring at me serious. Why? Everything dies, Maggie. Mama did. Papa will. We are constantly in the process of death. And everything both has a creator and a destroyer. Your grandmother was your mama's creator. And I was her destroyer. But why now? I asked. Jelly Baby shifted his weight and I could see the organs and arteries move around inside of his body. It was the proper time. I will die too. And soon. How soon? Soon. I looked down at his pitiful body and for a moment I almost thought of him as a brother instead of a monster. Part of me wanted him to die just to be rid of him. But some other part, some hidden side, was begging me to hold on to him, if only for a little longer. I came home from school and Leon had a grilled cheese sandwich ready for me. I didn't really need him to make me one. I'd been using the stove for three years by myself. And before then, Mama had shown me how to make muffins and pies in the oven. Thanks for the sandwich, Leon. You're welcome, dear, he said. His voice was deep and strong. He had never called me dear before. I got worried. As I walked out of the room, I saw Leon bending over, throwing something into the trash. His pants rode up over his muscular ankle for a second, and I noticed hair pressed tight against his legs from Mama's nylons. I couldn't understand why he was wearing them. I didn't say anything, and I don't think Papa knew. Papa got home from his first day of work after Mama's death. He looked much better than he had for the previous month. His hair was combed, he had shaved, and he was wearing his teeth. He had a strange smile. Hi, Papa. How was work? Everyone treated me like I had a disease. Like being a widower was contagious. I liked having everyone keep an arm's distance from me, smiling through nervousness. No one came to me with problems. They just tried to work them out on their own. I like being intimidating. Jelly Baby came to my room that night. I heard something softly thumping against the window, so I opened the curtains to see him leaning against it, like some great insect on a windshield. I opened it carefully, and he came inside. He asked for a bucket to sleep in, so I went to the garage and got one. It was clean and only had some paint stains on the outside. I filled it with warm water and Jelly Baby pulled himself inside. I didn't touch the Jelly Baby. You haven't visited me lately. It's been over a week. No, I was busy. Too busy for your brother? I understand. At times like this you need to think of yourself. I missed you. Really? You say it as though it were obligatory. You don't have to miss me, you know. Not now, anyway. Maybe tomorrow, when I'm dead. What? I've decided to die. What do you mean? You can't die. Yes, I can. You can watch me if you don't believe it. I told you everything dies. Then he rolled over in the water, staring up at me. He looked like a deformed cherub. How are you going to die, I said. I was starting to cry, although I couldn't understand why. I barely even knew the Jelly Baby, and I didn't like him. I resented him. It isn't hard. My digital alarm clock started playing music at four in the morning. I woke up and turned it off. Jelly Baby was on my bed staring at me. Wh what's happening? I groaned, rubbing my eyes. I had to get you up. I set your alarm off. Why? I'm leaving now. I want you to take me out to the swamp, where I'll die and leave you alone.
I sat up in bed and looked at him. No, I won't. You don't have a choice. I won't let you go. You will, he said. And I looked at him. He seemed more fragile than before. More sad. He stared out at me through his milky eyelids. And for a moment, I could understand the pain he felt. Every nerve was exposed to the world. With no skin to protect him, I could make out the hollows of his translucent skull and the movement of his pliable bones. Please. I got out of my bed and sneaked the bucket to the front room. I put on my running shoes and walked out into the night air into the swamp. Jelly Baby watched my face the entire time, never moving his glance to the sky or the ground. Empty me into the swamp and I'll be gone, he said. I leaned over him, into the bucket, and kissed him on the forehead. It felt soft, a little like a peeled grape, and beautiful. He pulled his mouth back into a smile, and I dropped tears onto him. I love you, I whispered. I hoped you would, he said. And then I lowered the bucket into the swamp, and he floated away. I saw his body drift a few meters and then sink under the surface of the water. When I returned home, I saw that a light was on in Leon's room. The door was open just a crack, so I knocked and peeked in. Leon opened the door. He was wearing Mama's favorite summer dress, and the flowered pattern flowed across him like a field. He wore her makeup badly, foundation clumping to his stubble, an eyeshadow too thick under his dark eyebrows. Eyeliner ran in rivulets down his face. I didn't want you to know. Say goodbye. Then let her go, I said, calmly and seriously. And he put his arms around me, shuddering, as he exhaled. That was After Mama Died, Carrying the Jelly Baby. It is available. The book is called Lemons on Venus and Other Stories by Brad Glenn. And it's available on Amazon or at uh, finer bookstores around you. And you can ask for it. And they can probably even order it in for you. Thank you so much. I hope to keep this going. I'll read a few more stories from Lemons on Venus. I got a few books kicking around too. I might read a chapter or two as we go and uh, maybe whet your appetite for a little bit of a longer read all right thank you so much for listening bye bye